this time on Street Rat Garage, getting back to the 1979 Chevy C20 Revival, getting things cleaned up and ready to sell. This truck has already been on the channel as a revival. If you want to see that, I'll put a link somewhere up there. But uh, yeah, we got it running, we got it driving. It had been sitting for like 10 or 12 years, something like that. I think 2010, 2011 was the last time it was plated. Uh, but we never really finished it up. We got it running off a of boat tank. We drove it around the block. It did well, but it is, it is still really, really dirty and we need to hook up the gas tank. We have a spare hood here that's not all taco shaped like you see here. And we just need to, we need to get this thing up and really we need to sell this. So we, we should be putting funds towards other projects. We got plenty of square bodies sitting around. So this one, we need to get it a new home. So I'm not gonna work on it here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it back to my house and we have access to the pressure washer so we can use that as long as we want. We don't have to go down to the car wash, but we're gonna get this cleaned up, detail the inside, hook up the tank. I think we need a window, uh, the hood, all that good stuff. So let me get this loaded up and let's get back to the house and start working on this. We're back at the house now and I just wanna do, uh, go over the truck a little bit more and see let you see what we're dealing with uh as you can see it's like i said before it's it's pretty dirty but you can see a little bit better in the daylight here just how just how bad this thing is 10 12 years of sitting outside underneath trees has really done a number on it and it's it's pretty bad off there's a license plate 2010 on the license plate. The bed's not too bad a shape. It's got a little bit of rust in it here and there. This is our hood that we're gonna be using. Uh, we definitely need to take off the old taco hood right here. It is just getting worse. I don't wanna bend it up too much. It's not really split on the top. So hopefully we can, I don't know, maybe save on that, get some save hood savers on that. Our grill's a little bit messed up here. Maybe we can fix that too. So there's that. It's even dirtier on the driver's side here. And I don't know what we're gonna do, if we're gonna put some shine juice on this or if we're just gonna hit it with a buffer or just spray it off and leave it alone. But we have to do something about that. So I'm pretty sure we're just gonna go ahead and sell this one. And we're gonna have to clean up the inside of the engine compartment a little bit here. Whoops. It's, yeah, it's pretty bad. Everything on this truck is pretty bad. Got some rust that came from up there. So, all right, well, let's get the old, let's get the old pressure washer out. And uh, let me give this thing a spray down real good. Okay, now it's time for the good stuff. The good old pressure washer. I think we're gonna need a time lapse and a little music on this one.
finished up on the power washing and it was a lot. So even more than what you saw, I went ahead and did the inside of the truck too. We just power washed everything out. And uh, if I do say so myself, I think it came out pretty good. We can get in here close enough and you can see that that is way better. This is the good side, of course. This is uh, the Facebook Marketplace side. Uh, this side over here, it's still pretty good, but it is a little more beat up than, say, the other side. But we can still see what a good job it is. Much, much better. I'm thinking about taking off this trim, though. Uh, the trim's off on the other side, and this is pretty bad, so might as well make both sides match a little bit more. This is under the hood area. It still doesn't look the best, but, you know, it's an engine compartment. Definitely a lot cleaner, and now we can see if we have any leaks or anything. This belt, AC belt, has got to go. The power steering, actually the alternator belt isn't a whole lot better, but definitely way cleaner. Now that we have it clean, we're going to have to do something with the shine. There's no shine on this at all. It is really dull. I'm debating on whether to use the shine juice. Maybe I should just use the shine juice on it, or maybe I should hit it with a buffer. I don't know. It's going to take like all day to do these curves with a buffer. This shine juice is just so much easier. So ah, that's that's a dilemma. Do we work hard or do we work smart? We've got this whole side to do. This is a big truck and it's gonna use a lot of lot of shine juice. Like I said, I went ahead and just hit the whole inside with the power washer. Just got everything everything wet and uh yeah it cleaned it up quite a bit but definitely gonna have to use I wonder if shine juice would work on this maybe we should find out can we use shine juice to do the inside i did it a little bit on one door panel on my 51 buick but nothing like this that i'm gonna be in for a while and it's got the mats maybe we'll just use the black magic i think we'll just use the black magic on the inside and maybe shine juice on the outside. We still have to do the hood. You gotta get this on. It's a little bit harder to do it by yourself, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and attempt it. Just toss this on real quick before we do any buffing or shine juice, whatever we're doing there. Well, it's time to take our hood off. And I always work, pretty much always alone. So I've gotten pretty good at taking hoods off by myself, but it's always a struggle. So watch and we'll struggle together. didn't go as bad as I thought. Usually I struggle a lot more, but fortunately the square body hoods are a lot shorter. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit the hinges here with some PB Blaster, because we do not want to bend this hood that's a lot better shape. It's got a little tiny crack right there, but it is uh, it's definitely not toppled. This side is good but we're gonna just drop some PB Blaster on all the little points here and in the latch here so it closes nice and good. And uh, yeah, let's see if I was able to get this in uh, a good position and see if she'll just close right up. Okay, most of you already know that these hoods are weak and the uh, one thing you don't wanna do is just come in here, grab it on the side and try to slam it down because that's what causes 
your tackle shell. The proper way to do this, and it's a little bit difficult, especially if you're short and we got this on a little bit of a hill. I'm not short, but I am standing in a dip. So push in, see this old stiff hood. These hood hinges are still stiff, even though I sprayed them, but that made it a lot easier pushing. See, I'm not even using my fingertips. Push in, push in, push in. Just like that. Don't just grab it and pull. Don't just pull down. Don't, don't, don't do that. Push, see? Didn't use my, didn't use my fingertips at all. Just the palm of my hands and I pushed in and down. I still need to align it just a little bit more and then she'll close with no problems. Uh, I don't need to align it. I need to remove this pin. For whatever reason, GMC, Chevy, they had two different latching mechanisms. I don't know when they changed it or what, but as you can see, that had a little mushroom looking thing and this one just has a little latch on it. So all you have to do is remove that plate and swap them back and forth and you're fine. But if you wanna see the crumple zone on these square bodies, this started out in 1974, the first year for the crumple zone. So there's a crumple zone here, there's one here and there's one down here. This is the middle part. This is gonna take the most you know, abuse. And if you look here, this crumple zone continues all the way across the hood, causing a wake point in the entirety of the hood. It goes all the way from one side to the other. This side, not as much. This side, the middle is definitely weaker. You can see even the, the back is more reinforced. So they really wanted it to bend in the middle right there not as much on the ends but they still wanted to do that and if you also if you look here you'll see a hole now that hole and it's the same right here this hole right here when the hood's closed it goes down into this pin now when that hood moves backwards it, that hole catches on this pin and that keeps the hood from going up into the glass and you know chopping your head off or whatever but that is the story on the crumple zones now in like what was it 80 they went to the flat hood those hoods are a lot stronger they still have crumple zones but they're they're definitely stronger in the middle and don't bend as easy even with this hood you can see there's still a slight bend in it there's a little crack right here but we can get us some hood savers as soon as Derek from Vice Grip Garage starts making those. We'll get a couple of them and put those in. That'll strengthen that hood so we don't lose this, this good one here. I'm going to go ahead and switch these latches over and then we'll, uh, we'll get to shining this thing up. Okay, got the proper latch on this time. I haven't realigned it yet, so we're going to see if she'll drop into place this time. Yeah, I know, push, I pulled down, but I pulled down on the center. That's still not what you're supposed to do. Push and close. Perfect. Okay, let's check our gaps here. Pretty decent on that side. Yeah, about the same on that side. It's a little bit high right here, so. We definitely have just a little bit. I can feel a, a little lump right there from it starting to bend. So definitely gonna have to get a hood saver on that, but way better than that hood over there. And this actually matches really well. I got lucky. It is very difficult to find a square body hood with an approximate patina that matches your fenders and in the same color. So yeah, score on that one. So next up is rather we should use the Vice Grip Garage Shine Juice or use a heavy grit 
buffing compound and our buffer. I think we should uh, try a little bit of both and see how they look. Okay, I just hit it with a buffer. Let's look at that real quick. So, it's got a very good shine. Thing is, I wiped it with this towel and it still has a lot of oxidation on it. That's how dull it is. This is actually sort of a metal, metal flake finish. And it may be, it may be clear coat. I can't quite tell. But uh, I think we're, we're not going to try the shine juice on it because there's just, there's just too much oxidation right here. The shine juice is for when you already have all that oxidation off and that's like the final, the final touch. But we're going to go ahead and not waste our shine juice. We'll save that for a better project than this. And we'll just go ahead and run the buffer out on it and get out all of this, all this oxidation. It's, it's bad. So... If it wasn't so badly oxidized, I think I'd just use the shine juice because that's going to be way easier. Buffer. We're just going to go ahead and pick this up in the morning. It's going to rain tonight and I don't want to spend hours buffing this thing just to have water spots on it first thing in the morning. So give me a second and we'll just flash over to the next day and we'll get to buffing on this. And welcome back to day number two. So. I think the next thing we should do before we buff too much more is start on this interior because it is it is pretty disgusting. Uh, this has the typical Chevy gross sticky steering wheel. I'm going to try this Lysol all-purpose cleaner because that's what was in the kitchen when I went in there. So I am just going to soak everything down this dashboard is so dry and cracking we're gonna have to get some uh something on there black magic or something uh petroleum based in order to put back some of the what the moisture because it is just brittle i'm just going to go ahead and soak down everything the seats the floor pans floor mat all of the dashboard this smells good it's a lemon 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 scented so i'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down real quick then we'll have another look to see what that looks like and then we'll decide what to put on it to make it what rejuvenate it shine it up all right i'm gonna wipe this down real quick I have the old black magic right here and I've already sprayed down the dashboard once to let it soak in some of that uh, you know, I'm pretty sure this is a silicone based product but I'm just gonna hit it again real good and the seat real good the steering wheel especially the steering wheel it's nasty and you know what, just do everything. I am just gonna pretty much spray the entire inside of this truck and wipe it in. Door panels, all of that stuff. What I like to do is make sure to get the rubber seals on these trucks. This uh, silicone based product really helps them out, especially uh, when they've been sitting for this long. So I'll hit the one on the other side as well. But door panels, dashboard, just, oh, and I dropped it. Everything, just spray it. This truck is nothing but vinyl and plastic. And it has been sitting in the sun and the cold and the heat and the cold. And everything's dried out inside of here. And don't forget the, not the windshield, the, uh, we call those sun visors. 
sun visors. I'll get the other side in a minute. Everything. Get the back window sealed too. I mean, just just spray, spray, and spray. Now I'll go ahead and wipe that in real good, and uh, we'll have a look at it. But you can see basically what it's going to look like. It's not going to be that shiny, but it's definitely going to help protect all the interior and make it look much much better. I just sprayed the tires as well. I mean, that's like magic. That's what it's really for, spraying the tires. But uh, man, it really really helps with the plastic on the interior. They have some black magic interior stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's just the same liquid, only in a different bottle with a different label with a higher price tag. So that's done. And the interior is done. So let me get to wiping down that interior and we'll look at it again. Use one of I just use one of these applicator sponges that you can get from, uh, you know, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly's. I think they all have them. It uh, it's, uh, absorbs all the extra, and then you can spread it around to all of the other spots so you don't waste any. Just give all the door panels, all the dashboard. You can feel the dashboard, it's still rough when I rub this cloth across it because it's been neglected for so long. But, all right, I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll we'll look at it real quick. There we go, it's all done. It's still really, really oily. I uh, used that sponge and uh, it just soaked up all that other stuff and just sort of smeared it around, which is just fine because I wanna leave a lot of residue left over. I'm gonna shut the shut the truck up and just let that sun bake it in real good or let the vinyl absorb it in so that heat will help open those pores and let that stuff just go right into the material. So I don't recommend using this on the steering wheel because uh, yeah it leaves residue behind but this one's so bad it's gonna absorb a lot of that and then we can come back and uh, just wipe off with a towel the rest of that and probably the same thing with the seed any the tomorrow or whatever after this all soaks in anything that's left over we'll just spray it back down and wipe it off so we don't get it all over our clothes but we just need a little bit of lubrication in everything right now it is hard to believe how much oxidation is on this truck but I'm going to show you real quick just by hitting it a little bit with this buffer. Let me bring you in so you can see what it looks like before. So this is pretty much it before. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a buffer and we'll compare it to the after. Okay, I'm just going to smack it real quick down low, not too fast. Real quick. Just a little bit there. And wipe it off. There we go. That's good enough. You can see just how bad that is. There's actually flake, metal flake in the paint. I can get, keep the shadow off of it. Maybe come to this side. There you go. See the metal flake that's in there? Could not even tell it before. So it's going to shine up real good. We'll, we'll just do the whole thing. We'll shine the dents. We'll shine the chrome. We'll shine the tires. Everything. <laughs>
that's pretty much it on the buffing. I still have to come in here and do the hood, but that takes forever. The sides came out really nice, but this truck seems to be uh, two different tones. For some reason, the sides faded a lot more, or the doors faded a lot more than the fenders, the bed also. I don't know why that is. Maybe it was parked half underneath a carport or something, but the sun was hitting the back half, at least on this side. You can see how much lighter it is. It's a lot darker here. The hood is the same color. I mean, it's it's the same the same kind of paint. It's a little bit darker up here. So, for whatever reason, we got a lot of a lot of faded right in here. But it came out nice. But right here is the uh, Facebook Marketplace side. It looks really really nice. So just as long as we take a picture right about here and only add one and don't, uh, don't tell anybody about the other side, it should sell rather quickly. But, of course, I do not do that. Okay, so... I may have gotten carried away and unbolted the seat because it wouldn't move back and it was stuck, but good thing I did because there is a mess underneath the seat and it's not pretty. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad in there. Now, all of this is under and behind the seat. That's, that's bad. Oh, look, a hat. What is that? What is that logo? I have no idea what that means. Anybody know that logo? Anybody want this hat? Yeah, probably not. Oh, a hammer. Nice. Oh, what's that? What is that? Shears of some sort. Oh, we got all kinds of stuff. Jack handles. Uh, trim that we're missing from somewhere. A pipe. Uh, what is that? Kitty litter scooper. A punch. A real, no, a chisel. Big chisel. Ew, what is that? I don't know what that is. I think it used to be a road flare. Ah, wow, what a mess. But anyway, the reason I took this out, it won't scoot back. This side, this is the main side. And it moves, but this right here is frozen. So I'm gonna have to soak that with some PB blaster to get it to move because it is completely stuck. You're supposed to pull on that side. This cable pulls this out in that direction and releases the track. Well, it's uh, it's not doing it, and it is stuck sort of right in the middle. I'm too tall for that, so. Ha, huh, yeah. We'll lube that up. We'll let it sit overnight. We'll throw it in the garage because the temperature took a turn. It is getting cold, and I'm pretty sure it's getting ready to rain. But how about another look at the Facebook side? Facebook market put Facebook Marketplace side. I put uh, one hubcap on, and it's looking pretty good. So outside squared away inside eh, not so much you gotta clean out the bed too but oh yeah i wanted to show you this window too <laughs> this is this has been down the entire time that i've owned the truck uh wasn't connected to the regulator so i got some needle nose down and pulled it up this is just plexiglass so somebody took the time to go buy some plexiglass when I say had it around but anyway cut out the shape shove it down in there make sure it fits I imagine I don't know why I don't know if they had to take the door panel off but it seems like it just would have been easier to get a piece of glass out of a wrecked door whatever rusted door and put it in 
instead of going through all this trouble for a plexiglass window that doesn't function properly. But I digress. I'm going to get this cleaned out. I spent the whole day cleaning this truck, so we're going to have to put it off for another day. Hopefully it's not going to rain too much. Suck all this out. Fix the seat. Fix the window. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> we got another day's worth of work to do before we can uh, get this thing fired up and see how well she does on the road. I just finished cleaning out the interior here. And as you can see, it looks a world better. Uh, I'm just using one of these weird plastic type drill thingies and just bring it down with some juice and getting these mats a little bit cleaner than what they were I'm not sure if I'm gonna get all of that gunk out of there but it's definitely gonna be a lot cleaner than what it was I'm also gonna try to clean up these rims right here just get rid of this rust so I'm just using the same drill and a wire brush on those I'm just gonna zap that down I cleaned up the hub real good. I'll just pull the wheel off, paint all that black, then tape off the tire, paint that white, put a hub cap on it, and it should look a lot better. And this one's already in pretty good shape right there. So I'll redo that one. Well, actually, I'll do that one, but everything should look pretty much like that after it's done. I'm also putting a muffler on it. I'm doing all this at the same time. It's a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. Put a muffler on it. Uh, like a two and a half inch flow master because somebody cut off the catalytic converter took all the exhaust out from underneath of this truck it was going to be scrapped so we saved it from the scrap yard they were going to pull the engine they've already they already started scrapping it by taking the catalytic converter off uh, so exhaust just pass the cab make a dump the wheels put the interior back together we got to hook up the fuel line to the gas tank and then we should be able to go for another test drive and see how everything works everything works good then uh it'll probably probably be time to put this up for sale while i have the seat out might as well just go ahead and uh, clean up the back of it this is uh, one part nobody's ever going to see but it's pretty filthy and it probably has a lot of smell to it. I was here trying to loosen up the release on this side. I got it all lubed up and released and I was pulling on it and I broke the wire. It's a little bit too weak and fragile and rusty and it just, it just snapped. So, what I did is I found some gardening wire. It's about the same thickness. So I'm thinking we can just cut that, twist it on there, and that should, uh, that should fix it up for us. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It looks about the same gauge wire, so we just have to uncurl it a little bit, and it should work just fine. And just like that, it is back in. It had this weird little spring deal twisted over, so I'm not sure why, but I put it back in on both ends. So it seems to work just fine now. You just pull on that guy, and that guy moves, and you can slide the, slide the track back into it. So good deal. All we have to do is wrestle this guy back in here. Come on, come on. Eh, not so bad, right? Line up the holes. Where's the holes? Put the screws back in and tighten her down. Easy peasy. The UPS guy showed up and uh, he dropped off our 
blanket seat cover thing here so uh i'm gonna go ahead and get that put on there that ought to finish out the interior as far as i want to do that is i went ahead i took the front wheels off both front wheels i painted them and uh we got them all cleaned up and they look nice so that one and that one there so that part's looking good i just took the grill out of the truck and it's over here it is not in good shape but these are a little bit difficult to find or you can order them from lmc and uh you know pay some money but it's cracked up a little bit but i did get some super glue and i have paint so let me paint this real quick then we'll look at it see what it looks like and then we'll get that blanket on see what that looks like and we'll be another step closer to getting this wrapped up been getting some things wrapped up here and i got the grill painted right here so i'm getting ready to slap that back in uh big project was putting this window glass in and the, and the door locked so the door locks well, that's a good thing but went ahead and uh put the seat cover on here so we got all that done and the door we can reach it and reach it there we go and the glass so we got the glass put back in there got the door panel on even though it's missing some trim pieces and the uh the thing that you grab there it had this piece of plastic piece of plexiglass in it for so long and it was leaking that the screws were rusted and i couldn't get them out so i had to take a grinder and grind those off um, had to lube up the inside of the window assembly so the window works it wouldn't move at all the regulators were all froze up and uh it's still a little a little hangy but a lot better than what it was we have a uh, some felt that's messed up inside the track that's why it doesn't want to go all the way up but let's force it through there and it works just fine vent window still a little stiff but everything's working on the door now uh, I mean, somebody just really took so much time to make this and uh yeah do it the right way not that i'm one to talk but some things you got to do kind of the right way this is definitely 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 not one of the shortcuts you want to take finished up all the rims on both sides of the truck so this side looks nice the only thing is i only have three hubcaps so we got one wheel that doesn't have a hubcap on it this is a good side though so maybe nobody will notice well that definitely looks much better it's not perfect it's missing a couple little slats right there but no big deal so next up i need to get the fuel pump hooked up i'm gonna have to use a electric fuel pump for right now because the, the rod you can't see it from here but it's it's down there the rod for the fuel pump is stuck in the hole and it will not move out so i'm just going to use the collectivity clack until i get enough time to uh, fix it properly but we need to get moving i have the extra pump on uh, i'll just use the block off plate for right now just as long as we get we can get down the road it'll be cool okay fuel pump is installed and wired up now let's see if uh let's test first let's test for leaks and then uh, we'll see if it'll fire up and run key on pump is running i can hear it i do not see any leaks uh, not overflowing into the carburetor so let's try to fire it up well that started nice and easy still no leaks and 
it died. Okay. Try that again. shutting off I don't think I have enough choke but I can uh, adjust on that later and fuel pumps running just fine I got it down here close to the framework rail so it's pretty even with the uh, fuel line I know it should be back further because fuel pumps like to push instead of pull but let's get that fire back up I don't want to leave that pump running too long so let's start this guy back up come on yeah, I definitely think we need some more choke It starts right up, you just have to give it some gas. So, and the choke's wide open and it shouldn't be right now. But let's close the hood and uh, let's go for a little bit of a test drive. I do not know how old that gasoline is. I added like two gallons to the tank, but I'm sure there was uh, some leftovers in there that are probably 10 years old. So that's probably not helping us much. The gas gauge doesn't seem to work because it's showing way over full. And it died again. Come on, keep going. There we go. Yeah. Come on. That's uh, one to die out. You better find a place to turn around because. We're not gonna make it far. Well, we're dying. Come on. And she died. Come on, let's make it to this parking lot. Make it to the parking lot. This is too heavy to push. It sounded like it was starving for fuel, so just gonna turn the key on here a little bit. Let the fuel pump run. Maybe we don't have enough fuel pump to uh, feed this big monster 454, but give it a couple pumps. Yeah, she's running again. I think we're fuel starving. Don't think we have enough gas. Don't think we have enough fuel pump. Well, let's run it back to the house and see if it continues to run or if she dies out on us again. We might have to just ease it on back not get on it too hard. Nice and easy. I'm just 
going to drive her slow and not really get into it too hard. Well, I am stuck on the hill here waiting. Uh, hopefully the fuel pump will catch back up again and we can climb this little, little bit and turn into the uh, turn into my house here. This is not good. Man, there she goes. This obviously it's not getting fuel. Okay. Home stretch. Wanted to rev it up there until it died so I can check, uh, let's see if there's any fuel in the carburetor. If there's no fuel in the carburetor, then we know what happened. And nothing. Nothing. You can hear it. So, yep, yeah, that's it. We don't have enough uh, fuel pump or it doesn't want to pump upwards or the filter's clogged already because we have bad gas so I'm gonna pull the line I'll inspect a little bit and let you know I'm gonna pull the fuel line off of here and I have this glass bottle right here we'll run the fuel pump hose into and see uh, just how much how fast and what kind of condition the fuel is in so I'm just gonna wedge it in here and I'm going to turn that pump on for a few seconds and see what happens. Smelling that gas. That does not smell good and looks... What's spilled out kind of looks like it has a little water in it, so that may be a problem. Okay, keep an eye on this fuel bottle while I go cycle the key real quick. Filling up fast. Uh huh. I'd say we probably found our problem. Have a look at this. Um, fuel floats on top of water. So this would be water. This would be fuel. Yep. So what we need to do now is uh, just... Well, look at that. You can see that? Well, you can see it right there real good in the sun. Look at that. How much water is in there. That's crazy. Huh. Yep, that will do it. So I'm going to go ahead and run the pump into a can and we'll drain off all that fuel water. Okay got a hose down here got a bucket so I'm gonna go turn that on and let her drain just plug it here a little bit let it build some pressure Ooh, there she goes now she's running yep let's let that run hopefully it's not uh, more than this bucket and we'll have a look at it finally done so what are these? These are twos, two, four, six. That's about three, nine, and just a touch more in there. So these are actually over full. So probably nine and a half, almost 10 gallons of fuel. And uh, it's all pretty much gonna look like this. So yeah, I would say that probably is our issue. Now to find a place to properly 
quote unquote, dispose of this. So I just added two gallons of fresh gas and I put the jug back up there, the glass, the glass jug, it's a bottle. And I'm gonna turn the pump on and let's see what we get now. yellow it's a little yellow oh there it goes it's cleaning up now okay made it so it was coming out yellow at first because of what was left in the lines but it quickly cleared up and that looks a lot better it's still a tinge cloudy from what we had before but it smells a whole lot better so I'm gonna hook up the old fuel lines the new fuel lines and uh, we'll see what we have now okay now we have some accelerator pump let's give it a try Okay, still a problem with not having enough fuel pressure. Huh. So I went ahead and pulled out the old uh, filter. This is the one that goes inside the carburetor. It's running a little bit sluggish. doing that now it wasn't doing that before so now it looks like it's time for a test drive all right let's get pulled out of here and try that one more time and see if that makes a difference i imagine with all that uh water and debris going through that filter that uh it didn't take long for it to, to get clogged up plus sitting all those years definitely did not help it out so a lot of people forget about the filter that's on the inside of the carburetor but uh, it, it gets nasty all right pulling back out on the main street and let's see what she has now better lots and lots of better
got into it just a little bit, opened up the force. It's a little spunky. It is definitely uh, definitely a big block truck, that's for sure. No doubt about that. She uh, got down on it. Well, I think we can call that a successful revival. We are done with the Chevy C20. It's a big block truck. It runs, it shifts through all the gears, it stops, it steers, it does everything it's supposed to. We're gonna go ahead and put it up for sale and let the next owner finish up on all those little things that it may need or just drive it like it is. It's perfectly fine and ready to go. So that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Street Rack Garage. Until next time.